I know a lot of people get really intimidated when it comes to drawing architecture, especially on site. I think people feel that they should measure, they should use a ruler, they have to measure out the linear perspective, but it's just not practical when you're traveling to draw like that. Right. Sometimes you just got to get the impression before you have to move on really fast. Because again, everything about plein air drawing is so unpredictable that you should probably approach a drawing with the intention of it looking finished every step of the way. Architect Frank Gehry, he does the super fast scribbly pencil and pen drawings that are sketches that eventually become these monumental buildings. I thought to myself, hey, that would actually work really well (laughs) for plain air because I don't have to draw every freaking Gothic arch. I can just show my impression of the monastery and try to capture some of that. How do you describe the Geronimo's monastery? It was really overwhelming at parts. I think it would have been really difficult to draw something accurate. I think that you had the right approach in just doing a gesture drawing. It's a large building. When you see it from afar, you just kind of get the grandeur of size. But once you start looking at it closely, you start to see, oh, little statues, little carvings, all of the decoration. What I look for is if I just scan the building, what do I see first? In this case, it was those four little towers. And there are two more big ones later on. But then also that main entrance, which is this very large, dark arch. There weren't a lot of other shapes in that building that were that pronounced. And so I chose to focus on that. And then just a few of the windows on the side. I definitely did not use pen on purpose. I used watercolor, which a lot of people wouldn't think to use on an architectural drawing. But I think it makes such a big difference as far as capturing the gesture of the monastery. Not just the gesture of the building, but also the mood. Because, I mean, it's a monastery. It's not a fair. It's not a carnival, right? (laughs) Thanks for the update, Kat. (laughs) (laughs) The way you painted that building definitely felt like a somber, more serious building. It's because I'm painting the ghost of the building. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Or something deep like that. Whenever I visit New City, I always try to see what impacts me immediately. And for me, it was definitely the color of the buildings in Lisbon. There's definitely some iconic colors on the buildings that you just never get in the United States. I have to imagine that living with creamsicle orange has to brighten your day. There's no chance that doesn't impact you. When speaking to Portuguese people, their response is to say, oh, we don't even notice the color anymore because we lived with this our entire lives. Yeah, they thought I was a weirdo because I kept going like, look at that magenta. Oh my God, that lime green. Well, you're also just an art nerd. I think normally people would be surprised over people saying that over colors. I feel like green is the Lisbon colors, like mint chocolate chip, but there's variations. There's also like key lime. It's on all the taxis and all the scooters. Every place we visited in Portugal really had its own color palette. Sintra was all about the primary colors. Obidosh was yellow and blue stripes. I think that's so much fun that no matter what city you're in, you can find that color palette. 